Good evening, comrades. Good evening, friends. How are you doing this evening? Again, I can't see you. Um, I'll give you two minutes to share the live, please. I've tagged a few people. And um, I hope some persons will join me. Uh, let's see. I think there is some way or another to see the persons who are speaking, but I better not touch anything. <laughs> okay. Um, I suspect that there's nobody here yet. Says so the comments will appear. So, I am still here. Let me see. Let me touch this thing. I hope it doesn't do anything. Uh, it does something. Okay, I better not touch anything else. <laughs> All right, so somebody has joined us. I'm not seeing who that person is yet. Um, they haven't commented. So, hi, good evening. Um, my name is Michelle Stern. Stern, I can't even pronounce my name. Two persons have joined. Hi, Ruthie. All right, that's Ruthie. Yes, Ruthie, love you too, darling. Love you too. Good comrade, this. Good comrade. All right, anybody else? Three persons. Yes, there you are. Yes, you're here, you're present. Good to see you, Ruthie. Anybody else? So, um, can you share the light, please, Ruth? Thank you very much. All right. I hope I am ready for tonight. I, uh, <laughs> I spent a good many minutes and hours working on, on this thing. I like to give myself about a week or so to prepare. That's how long I took. I think I took maybe about two weeks in the first live. Just doing research, I was never, never felt satisfied that I had the information, and I don't like to work without information. Okay, there is, um, I do believe that that is Nikki, Comrade Nikki from West Milan. Um, Western, I believe. Hi, Nikki. All right, so we have four persons. All right. Um, can you share the live, please, Nikki? Can you um, share it with the other guys? I'm unable to share it in the group. Hi, Nikki. At least maybe I can, you know, from the laptop. Uh, let me see. It is prone to crash, and I would not be surprised if, it, if it's not um, decided to go belly up on me tonight. Um, all right, so that's four of you. Hi. Uh, well, it's also slow. And um, can you share it with your friends on also on in Messenger, please? Let me get out of this. That was a great live, wasn't it, last night? Boy, I don't know if I can um, I can be quite as eloquent. I'm sure I can't. As Comrade Cross, I am telling you, that lady is something else. All right, so five persons. Not sure who the other one is. I think I recognize that icon. Okay. Um, hi, good evening. All right, not seeing who it is yet. Let me see if I touch that there. Oh, Riona White. Hi. Oops. <laughs> I, almost made, I almost put you on, Riona. All right, so uh, let me see if I can see myself. Uh, hello, can you share the live, please, ladies? Ah, I see Conrad Cross is on. Sporting the crown. Can you share the, the live, please? See a, a few more persons coming along. Tonight we'll be speaking about uh, what is being called a policy document, which the writer of it, at least he's the chairman of the commission that wrote it, for some reason didn't refer to it as a policy and vision document, although the words policy and vision did appear in it. All right. So um, can you share the light, please, ladies? 
Let me see now. I've been on for how long now? Let's see. Let me touch that button up there. Five minutes. Um, two more minutes, and I suppose I, I should continue. Uh, let's see. Oh, where am I? Can't even find myself. Lord, it's hard for me. Oh, where am I? Oh, I'm here. I'm using a laptop, and I forgot where I go to find my profile. My own profile. I think I click on the, that button. I think I click on this button. Ah, oh, here we are at my profiles. I'm sure I'm seeing myself now. Hmm. Uh, yes, I'm seeing myself. So, um, I don't want it to interfere. I hope it's not interfering. Tell me if it's interfering. It's not sunny. Right, that's seven persons. Hi, Gary. All right. And sunny days. Hi. Share the live, please. I'm going to give you guys two more minutes. Let me see where we are now. Uh, about seven minutes, and I'll be um, starting. Hi, flowers. How you do? <laughs> I see you post up some pretty, pretty picture, there, man. <laughs> I can't keep up with you. <laughs> Bring some people now, flowers. Thank you. All right, taking a little while for persons to warm up. So tonight I'll be speaking of a policy document. is called Transforming Jamaica, the Politics of Equality, Transformation, and Participatory Document. It is called by um, the party president, Mark Golding, and um, the senator, Peter Bunting a policy and vision document. But Tony Boggs, who's the chairman, Professor Boggs, who's the chairman, and um, and there are some comrades here who can tell us that uh, Comrade Boggs has been, um, I think he was the head of the party school way back when. And um, and he is, um, yes, I see that today, uh, Karen. I see you, I see you, Karen, Comrade Cross. And um, so he's very much versed in not only um, what the Constitution is about, the history of the party, but he's also um, the father, if you may refer to it, a teacher of many of the elder, older comrades who would have gone to that um, those party schools. So. I guess when he was asked to prepare this document, based upon how he worded a section of it um, in the introduction, I get a distinct impression that he has this, uh, well, he, he knows, knows that it's unlikely that the delegates would vote. Um, the party president at his uh, meeting on Sunday um, said some very interesting things. Um, and in my humble estimation and fervent hope, we will adopt that document. Fervent hope. He seems to have some doubt too, because clearly Professor Boggs would have told him the, the, thing, the thing I want to warn me for put together, boss. Not going past. Now, I am sure I turned off notification. I hope it's not interfering. And there is a notification I came through just now. Um, I can't do anything about that now. So I hope you can see me well. No interference yet. All right, so let me begin. So this policy commission was set up in order to uh, um, each, each party president usually you know, they come with their own, comes with their own, um, how should I say now, ideas about how to accomplish the goals, the objectives, and the principles of the party. It's a democratic socialist party, a socialist party, 
a democratic socialist party and you guys call yourself and so do I a socialist and um, so each president would come with their own ideas their own um, about how to uplift the people because that's really what socialism is about when it when you when it um, when you when you boil it down to to the um, how should I put it now um, when it comes down to it, that's what it is all about. So this document starts by saying, "It, it, 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 it go on. So we can go on. Let me now go on camera to find audio." Now there is something going on here. Um, can you Don't hear now? Well? She's a researcher in anything. Yeah, Narval, you seem to touch the wrong button, so I'm going to take you off now. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, stop going live with Narval. Now, what does that mean? They'll still be able to watch your broadcast. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Narval is a man who makes me laugh every time. All right, so the document begins by saying that there was, due to the election, electoral loss in 2020, there was an appraisal committee report that analyzed the loss. And in that report, it was noted, and I'm reading now, that there was a lack of clarity about the, identi um, the ideological and philosophical basis of the party, lack of identity. Now, when I saw that, I said to myself, what do you mean lack of identity? Um, about the idea, the ideology of the People's National Party. The lack of clarity, I don't understand that. I mean, surely, guys, tell me, do you know what the ideology of the People's National Party is? It's a democratic socialist party, right? That's the ideology. So when I talk about lack of clarity, it is not the membership that is not clear about what the party is party's ideology is. The identity of the party is that it's a democratic socialist party and you call yourselves um, as members socialists, right? So you have your identity and the People's National Party has its identity. It's a democratic socialist party. So what are they talking about? Who it is that lacks this clarity? Let me put it to you this way. The only lack of clarity that they could be talking about, since they're talking about the election, an election is basically about messaging. It must be the message that is being put out that lacks clarity about the ideology and the philosophy of the PNP. Now, who it is that is responsible for messaging, you would uh, you would say that that would be the leadership, right? All those persons that they put in the, um, the the campaign committee, I guess they would have been the ones that would put the the messaging together. Not only message, um, um, there is also the manifesto, and in the manifesto you put your programs, you you outline to the public, the voting public what it is that you intend to do um, if elected for the five years in government. That is in the manifesto. So if the People's National Party, part of the reason why the party lost the election is due to the lack of clarity. And according to this document, it is not the first time the report, the appraisal reports have been saying that this is a problem with the PNP in the past, right? It says here that um, it says here that that it's it's something that um, been reported on before. So what is going on? Is it that the leadership of the People's National Party don't know what the party is about? Is it that they don't know that it's a democratic socialist party? Is it that they don't know that the party is exist in order to uplift 
the small man, not just a small man, you know, everybody, but with a focus on those who are poor and vulnerable because they are the ones that need the help. Let me put it here this way, comrades. If there is a, a lack of clarity in the messaging as it relates to the ideology and the philosophy of the PNP, it must, it must, um, it must have something to do with how they are putting the messages together. Are they putting the message together based upon the party's um, stated philosophy or are they putting it together to win the election? Because if that is what they are doing, ignoring what the party is about, then what you're going to get, because they're not following any, um, they're not following any, how should I put it now? They're not, they're, they're not going according to any principle. If they're not going according to any principle, then what you're going to end up with is a little mumbo jumbo thing, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It doesn't flow and therefore it doesn't connect with the Jamaican people. Now, when the last time we had that uh, uh, 2011, 2011 election where the PMP um, won um, two to one, I believe, what was that message? Was, it, was that the progressive agenda message of Portia? Or was that the title for the, 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 um, the, the document? Who can remind me? Right? So you have something and then now you go out and sell it. Let me tell you what I believe is wrong with the People's National Party and messaging. They create a message that is basically aimed at getting votes from the telling the people, the small man, what is in it for them. So you mess you 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 tell them about what you plan to do for farmers and you plan to do for you know for, for small business and medium sized business and so on. But the where they, I think they fall down, if you think about those ads that they produce, I don't think you see too many Chinese, you don't see too many um middle class people i don't think so i don't i don't think you see too many um business people in those ads what they need to do when they create what the party needs to do the the, the people in the camp the uh, committees what they need to do when they create these messages for the poor people is to not only tell the poor people how it's going to benefit them but they must go to the middle class and tell them how the same policies that will benefit the poor, how it will benefit them. Go to the businessman and tell the businessman, this is a poor man policy, you know, but this is how it's going to benefit you. And then when you make them feel and understand that this thing will benefit them. You see, when the Labour Party come to them for money, because they want you to win because you're coming with something that will benefit them, they're not getting any money, you're going to get it. But as long as you focus your thing on poor man because they are in the majority, you're going to isolate the people, the middle class. You know, you're going to talk about the nurses and the this and that. You just drop them into it. But what is the policy that will benefit them? So I think that is perhaps what is wrong with the messaging, right? And um, the people who vote for PNP are aware of what the party's um, ideology and philosophy is about. That's why they vote. Um, for the PMP, they want the small man to be looked after because they know that that is in the best interest of the country and themselves, right? Even if they're not small. Okay, so they are saying that the reason why they create this document is to clarify the ideology and the philosophy of the PMP. What well, I find curious was listen to these words of Comrade Boggs. He said the document, this document is written as a discussion document. And hopefully, not sure, hopefully, will create the grounds for debate and discussion within the party. So Comrade Boggs don't seem to have much hope that what they are proposing as an identity for you, that you will Come, you go and go on a conference and vote for that. No matter how much workshop, then put you in and come with their sweet words. 
right? Them business man and them salesman, them salesman words. <laughs> he jolly well lose. <laughs> Who do not buy that? What am I sell? And so he 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 can only hope, right, that it will be a, a discussion document within the party. So you know when the party members them sit down over two beer, <laughs> or maybe a little wine, or um or milk. Or, or um, if I were there, I, I would be drinking um, orange juice, I suppose, or maybe a Pepsi. Um, when they meet and having this little veranda discussion, he's hoping that the document will be a part of it, you know, and um, person sharing their opinion and so on and so forth. So now there's a reason why Professor Boggs is very doubtful, you know, remember, you know, He's a man who had those party schools and he know when putting a phone ahead, <laughs> you understand, in order to ensure that you're loyal and committed to democratic socialism. He knew because when they're teaching somebody, you just teach them some. You have to teach them and, um, <clears throat> sorry, you have to teach them and ensure that they understand. And especially when it comes to politics, you have to teach them in a certain way to, <laughs> in order that they may be loyal and they know what to do and so on and so forth. So, one of the things that they propose now, according to them, clarifying the PMP's ideology in order to, according to them, get people to join the party. I don't even know so the PMP did that problem I get people join. We don't have how much members. Thirty or thousand, forty or thousand members. Um all sixty three seats um are, are even the ones in places like West Kingston, um Central St. Catherine Central, Clarendon, you have candidates. You have two hundred and twenty eight candidates for the local government election. Right? And when them ready they them fight who are who fight for get this seat and that you have more than enough people to join to represent the party at the local government level and represent the party at the national level and you have members to go out and do your work and you have been very successful at winning elections right they, they, since um this century we had election let me see how many elections we had 2002 general election that is 2002, 2007, 2011, 16, and 25 elections. And the PNP won only one. Two. Two of the five. They won 2002, and they won again 2011. 2016 and 2020, in my opinion, especially 2016, that was a sabotage job. By the same people who sabotage a party on election day, um, in order to lift themselves up into the leadership because the, the, <laughs> the uh, rise boss been having this, uh, what Comrade Cross call it, wet dream since he was a youngster at Campion that he wanted to be prime minister. Want to be prime minister, you know. His, his fantasy is to become prime minister and he's trying to see if that dream and that fant or fantasy can come to pass. Right? So in the process, he, he made some money along the way out of favors of the PNP apparently. So we hear him, FinSAC business, right? And uh, he, he was determined by any means necessary. Man broke a war upon the party, you know. And whereas these members of parliament have scruples, because I don't know if man can fight war with scruples, he never have none. War the man of fight. So whatever he had to do to win, he was going to win. You don't fight war to lose. Where you ever hear where anybody ever hear that? You fight war to win. And when he realized that the stocks of the labor rights were down, because he must seem like when Ron Paul upon Dr. Phillips and the PNP, Ron Paul upon Andrew, and realized that, when, that Andrew lost all of the support that he that he gained over the 2011 right back to where he was coming from. And if they're not voting for the labor rights, chances are they'll vote for the PMP. So they had to do something about it. So making the party look uh, disunited, as they did in 2016, because they had a very strong leader, it was risky business indeed to try and go in the field and sabotage a party. I don't think he had that support. I think he was able to gain the support 
when he challenged, he now knows who it is that's supporting, right? Through the challenge, and he could now expand his little um, coup on the People's National Party. And an election there, I'm sure Comrade Pross have, have not to, has not told us everything that she learned from comrades on the road going into these areas. And I tell you something too, it's not only the PNP people know, the labor rights know too. Because each one of these, each one of the PNP workers that were supposed to be working have a labor right counterpart. The runners for the PNP, you have labor right counterpart. So when they see all these funny things going on, I hear PNP people telling um, PNP workers, telling PNP people so they mustn't vote. All of that would have gone right back to Andrew, you know. They would not have known what it meant until the night of the election when they said the devastating wipeout. You think Andrew was going to keep a thing like that to himself or in the labor right? When the meeting with them big shot, with the big shot people, the financiers, all of that will be talked about. The man them sabotage the party to rat you know boss. And they would say, What are you talking about? We say yes and tell him exactly what happened. All of what was coming from the ground, from the, 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 um, the labor, right? indoor agent, outdoor agent, all of them, cluster managers and what have you, and runners. When them running up and down carrying people to vote, they must have a PNP runner and they must have won the war gone. When Andrew and the other labor rights tell these people, business people, that them boys had sabotage and one party. Nobody think that that is a secret. You know, nobody chat people business like Tapanaris. Every one of them would have know about it. Until it get to the ears of the PNP donors. Why are the, why is the PNP not getting any money? Hmm? They heard. They heard. Why is it that Mark Golding was, um, the, 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 the government is having um summit or whatever you want to call it and crime and have it on COVID and the opposition is not invited and nobody in the private sector don't say that can't work. How come? And when Mark Golding is complaining, they all heard and nobody come out and said this can't work. Them still go meet with the government with it to their exclusion. They all know. So the party can't get no money. Because they're not going to spend no money. Make them go find their own money. They ended up having to go to the diaspora hoping that them don't know. I swear they didn't get money out there. So yes or no, I would know. Right? Now, back to this document now. So in the document, there was introduced this phrase called democratic left. You see it on Mark Golding's page when he was talking about um, Ar Arquette, what, what's his name? Arnett, the comrade Arnett. don't remember if it was his memorial or birthday or something. Talking about this democratic left, you see? Mark Golding, not like socialism. He don't use the word for purpose. He don't like the word socialism. Now, if you don't like the word socialism and the People's National Party is a socialist party, how am I going to like the People's National Party? You can't like the party. And you are socialist. How am I going to like you? You can't like you. That's why you see the man go around the place and looks extremely uncomfortable when he's in, when he's in the company of too much orange people. You understand? No. They don't like socialism. And Bunting was on um, Cliff Hughes' program in 2019 when he was looking to challenge Dr. Peter Phillips, saying, when asked if he subscribed to democratic socialism, he said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And, he, and, and the PNP alone to remain. Don't subscribe to democratic socialism. So they don't like, the, they are the ones with a problem with the identity. Not the business people. Not, the, not you, for sure. Not the business people, not the voters, and not the youngsters either. The youngsters only want to know so something is in the thing for them. 
that works and sound like it can work. So who it is that have a problem with the identity and the philosophy of the People's National Party? The two damn capitalist infiltrators, wanting and going. They are the ones with the problem, with the ideology. So let me introduce this thing now they call democratic left. Now, before it came to the definition, uh, it was being mentioned in the document until it reached a point where com with, uh, Comrade um, Boggs and his committee said, so what is the democratic left? Now, hmm. let me tell you something, comrades. I don't know Professor Boggs. I'd love to meet him one day, but that is a highly, highly intelligent man. I think uh, Professor Boggs know what these two capitalists are up to. These two capitalists are not, this money that you see them spending, I don't believe for one minute that is their money alone. Notice that when they're running for president of the party, this is on labor rights, come out, come, labor rights, billionaires, come out, come endorse them. But they know them, say them a labor right. And they come out come and dance them. Right? Now, take sleep or mark that. We never know what was happening. So they were able to get away with it. These labor rights trying to change what the PMP is. Not because they want to make it a successful or they want to be able to give it money. What they're trying to do is to destroy the party. This is not the first time, comrades, that the party has been under attack. As early as in 1940s, the PNP was under attack from a group of men who were Marxist. Now, the party started in 1938, and by 1940, at the conference, it declared itself socialist. Tony Bogue said so in this document. After it declared itself a socialist, in that by the time 52 came around, right? You see how long it was? 40 to 52, that's 12 years. The four H's and all the Marxists, I don't know if they were the only ones. I suspect they weren't. But those were professing to be Marxists were booted from the party. You know why? Because they were going around selling the comrades at that time, the membership, the idea of Marxism, which of course, I, I don't even know what the hell it is. <laughs> I haven't looked it up, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I will post on my um, page, I, I did research, but it is apparently more extreme than socialism. Socialism is really, um, I will get to that. Having done that, Norman realized he had a hell of a problem. What to do? The party was being described as communists and the propaganda of the labor rights was causing the angst among the, the electorate. So when he realized he had a real problem now, they expelled the 4-H's. It wasn't until I read this document by Professor Boggs, and Professor Boggs, if you're watching, enough respect, because I hear that you probably um, expect that we will be dealing with it. So we're dealing with it now. He said that the party spent a lot of its energy trying to tell the comrades the difference between Marxism and, and socialism. Michael had just returned back from studying and he was up and down in, in the various groups at pains at explaining the difference between Marxism and democratic so much socialism. So what that what that says to me, don't know what it says to anybody else, what that says to me was that there was a great division because once you have the ideological divide, 
once you have one person with this ideology which comes with a set of policies and programs and philosophy and you have another one with the same you know the, um, another um, um, ideology you're bound to have um, a breakdown in terms of unity right and they were at pains took them a while this was from 50 to an election was in 55 they managed to win but that was almost three years working trying to get the, the, the party back together under the the um the democratic socialist i mean sorry not democratic socialist socialist philosophy at the time so these men undermine the people's national party and cause a whole heap of problem for the party right that they were able to they were able to win despite all of that. Basically, that's what Borg said. Now, why did Borg bring that up? He brought it up for a reason, you know. Because, listen to what now this democratic left is. When he asked the question, what is this thing called democratic left? What is it? He decided not just to give uh, a definition of democratic left, which when you read later, sound as if he came out of the head of bunting, right? He decided instead to break it down. He started first by telling you what left means. And I want you to listen carefully, comrades, because this is a grabberman of the whole thing. Right? Listen to what left means. Because if you go if you go on, on Google and Google Democratic Left, you're not going to find any phrase like that. There's no no body in the world, no, no body, B O D Y in the world, right? that has, um, has um, put a definition to this thing called democratic left. It was actually the name of political parties. Comrade Cross told me about the one in Italy. Um, I didn't discover the one there, but she, she found it. The one in Italy, that was basically a fascist, a fascist in their um, orientation, right? There was certainly one in Ireland, and I can tell you, that the parties went belly up. They went defunct. Because it is not an ideology. Democratic left is not an ideology that is recognized. I was not recognized. There's no meaning to it. It's just two words jumbled together and then call themselves by that name. And because there's no clarity about it, it's not uh, an identity, whatever the hell they use it to do and identify themselves by the Irish people weren't buying it nor the Italians, apparently. So they went belly up. So Democratic left, Tony Boggs and his commission decided to break it down for you comrades to understand. And the delegates who are going to be at the meeting, Tony Boggs broke it down for you. Let me tell you what he said. He's the left, and I want you to listen carefully. He said, left is a wide or broad, wide spectrum of political ideas from socialism to Marxism. Let me read that again. When you talk about left, what is it? The left is a wide spectrum of political ideas ranging from socialism to Marxism. It means the left is socialist, communist. These are these are you have you have these three um, spectrum. You have the left, you have the center, and you have the right. And where this left and right business came from, apparently came out of France and their parliament years and years ago, uh, back in eighteen something early, possibly maybe before that. And what happened was you had, I think they call him, I think they were royalists that they call him, I think so. And these were the aristocrats. And then you had the um, other people. They were rowdies, the other people. They were, they were loud in their, in their um, advocacy on behalf of the people. And on top of that, there were, um, they used to curse. Yes, man, they used to curse. Swear. Use swear words, right? 
So those persons who were from the gentry class, they want that, then go over on the other side until everybody realize over there. So the gentry sit down and so everybody go on that side and left the old rubble, low rubble houses on the, the other side. And that side was the left of, I think, may have been the speaker. Right? So they call them leftists. So left is not a positive word. For those who it was that coined it, it was never intended to, to be a positive word. It was a, it was a, 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 and it's a seating arrangement. So the, the rubber rousers, the loud one, the swearing people, and, was, and the advocates were over on the left. And then the right now you had the, the royalists, I think they said they were. So over time, the, the people start to call various ideology left and right. Now, it depends on who it is that is doing the calling. Clearly, the ones who are in charge are calling anything at all that, they, that, that is outside of the norm or outside of the, uh, what you would say now, uh, the status quo, the, the, um, the, you, you have a certain government, right, type of government, right, anything outside of that. They will call them leftist, and then anything that is on their side, right, a positive, you call them uh, right wing, left wing and right wing. So over time, the monarchy is a right wing um, political system. So too are the conservatives in, in modern Ireland. So you have these conservatives. You have the uh, monarchy, you have the uh, fascists, and the let me see what other ones. Let me let me look at them quickly. Um, you have and I have added serfdom, the system of serfdom, and I have also added slavery. I've added slavery as a a right wing system, a capitalistic system, right? As a matter of fact. I would label slavery as capitalism in its purest form. Capitalism is about profit. Doing, setting up enterprise, whatever it is you're doing, in order to make profit. It is profit-centered, right? And that's exactly what slavery was. It was utilizing um, a commodity, I suppose I would call it, right? In order to make profit. And the laws of the land, the slave codes, said who, what rights each. Of course, you know, you don't have no right other than what the, um, the slave master um, conscience will allow. And eventually they start to modif modify it and, and say they can't do certain things. Like, for example, they can't kill you <laughs> anymore, right? And that sort of thing. And serfdom would have been the aristocrats owning all the land. And the people were like renters on the land, right? They, they pay them rent. And, um, and they have other... I, I studied that in school a long time, long time ago, school back, right? And when it comes to the left now, you're talking about between... They're saying, no, you know, a wide spectrum. So left is not just... Uh, it's not an ideology. It's a group of ideologies that is considered to be left of center. You follow me? Good. And there now you have socialism, you have Marxism, you have communism, you have Leninism, Stalinism, the two um, Russian leaders, Maoism, which is the Chinese chairman, Chairman Mao, and of course the anarchists, and you have social democrat, etc. Anarchists. So these are um, some of the, the the political ideas that make up the left. This is what Tony Boggs is saying. It's a wide range, a wide spectrum of political ideas ranging from socialism to Marxism. All right, good. Then he went on to say, no, 
to be a democratic left party for that. They're called PMP now, you know, my love. Democratic left party. Nobody not call it democratic socialism anymore. But the democratic left, democratic left. Yes, my child. To be a democratic left party is to return to an ideological ground in which the left is a broad spectrum that stands for social change. What the hell that mean? Well, comrades, may I tell you what it mean? It says, when I'm call the PNP a democratic left party, they are saying that it is to return to the ideological grounding, right? In which the left is a broad spectrum. So in other words, they are saying that the left is um, um, a democratic left party comprises socialists, communists, Marxists, Marxist Leninists, and all them, an anarchists, if possible, and everything at every um, political idea that is on the left. That is what this is saying. That is what they are saying here. Tony Bogues is telling you, look here. Look here where you hear them say later on in the same document about unleashing um, entrepreneurial this and entrepreneurial that. When you use the word democratic left, you're opening up the People's National Party to any and everybody who is on the left of center. That is a soup. A recipe for disaster because you're talking about now a situation where you have the Marxists, the communists, and the socialists being invited to come join the party. You can't stop them to come confuse the whole process, create the vision, and mash up the party. Now, I don't know if Mark Golding and Peter Bunting recognizes i'm sure bulls explain it to them i'm sure he explained it to them this is what you're doing you can't call the party democratic left because when you call it left left has a meaning if you're talking about political ideas left has a meaning it means that it's not just socialism anymore now remember now we know when um norman and the other members, the comrades in those days. The PMP just started in 1938, 1940. They, they declared the party a socialist party. They would have looked at all of the political ideas at the time. And they would have decided, based upon what we are about, because them, them, them start them thing first and say, based upon what we are about, about uh, looking after the, the national issues, a nationalist party. And it's all about um, um, policies and programs that benefits the whole society, but with a view especially of lifting up the masses, the poor man. And based upon all, based upon that, the system that most accurately describe what we are is a socialist system. So what they did was to pick one. They picked one of the 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 um, the, the philosophical ideas of the left. Socialist. They pick one because you cannot have a party. That have a whole heap of different, 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 different views. It's not going to work. Even if you have one, right now you have everybody that is declaring themselves as socialist, and yeah, you still have arguments in the party because you have persons who maybe um, satisfy themselves that they are socialists, but they may really be preferring the communist system. When you start to have that, that is when you're then going to come with ideas now, which is extreme of what you are. Um, prepared to accept and a sound end up with an argument. So you cannot have a system, a party, a political party that is heavily dependent upon unity, 
because you have to you have to go into government and put programs in place and you need all of everybody on board you can't have people go here some people but this when you're ready to put the thing in place it's not going to work because the people not well i'll agree the pmp selected socialists when by the time michael came he declared the party in 74 the democratic socialist party and and um reaffirmed it in 1978 listen to what them say <laughs> So democratic socialism was declared in 74 and again in 78. Listen to what this thing says. We embrace them. <laughs> we embrace them, you know. <laughs> See, I come red. As if to say, oops, <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> ah, the phone is running hot. All right, I have to hold it now. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I tell you, man, thing is getting hot. How long I've been on? Ooh, long time. Let me get let me get going. So, um, if they say we, we, embrace, we embrace the democratic socialism declaration of the PNP, we, can you imagine? While proclaiming, listen to them now. Listen to what this committee set up by Mark Golding. And by the way, the owner for the party, you know, Peter Bunting, was in it, you know. He was part of the commission and sit down there and to make sure that whatever it is they want, and then get, right? And both just make sure. So they put it there, because they know that people are being, you know, who you know. And then they read between the lines and understand it, right? Then say, we are to pacify people and explain to people. Oh, no Hold on here now. Oh, let's see what happened. Uh, no sound. No, why is it? Can you hear me now? Oh. Can you hear me? Oh, my finger must have been um, over the... <laughs> over the um the, the button sorry about that i was saying that when they talk about the um the uh, tony books in the report mentioned that democratic socialism was declared in 74 and again in 78 they went on to say we embrace them we embrace the declarations we're not sure um democratic socialism we embrace it while at the same time we are proclaiming a wider political identity needed for the times the, po the wider political identity is the left thing we are talking about so in a, your party comrades members of the pmp delegates they have decided that the, the pmp needs an idea identity that is wider than the narrow identity of socialism. Them want it wider, right? Now remember in 1952, 70 years ago, Norman Manley kicked out some Marxist, this wider political identity is going to open the door for Marxists to come into the party. Now remember now in those days, in 1952, when the, the four H's were booted, they were 
Remember what they were, you know? They were Marxists. That's why Tony Bogues put from socialism to Marxism. He might tell you something. He's telling us something. Now, those Marxists cause a whole heap of problem for the PMP. Division within the ranks. Right? And if only one group of people cause so much problems, you can imagine when the communists then come in with the Marxists. Hmm? When the communists come in with the Marxists and the Leninists and everybody with their own little idea as to what they think um, is the right program and policies. What will happen to the PMP? Tony Bogue supposed to know that this don't make no sense. The party is a democratic socialist party. It, it is a not, what they are saying is that the, that the party's identity is too narrow. It's a socialist party. It's too narrow. What we need now to do is to make, make the identity of it wider and include other people with an ideology on the left. But it's time to reason because if you look at Peter Bunting and his um, campaign in 2019, all labor rights were out there blogging for him in a, in a, in a bloggers thing. And bloggers wrote all labor rights. I suppose they would call it apolitical. That is a correct word. So they want to bring in people because according to them, people don't want to join PMP anymore. People don't want to join PMP. So we need to widen and broaden the political identity. If somebody put there about fascists, I wouldn't be too surprised. Right? If they're not allowing fascists to. And racist. They're not capitalists for sure. So these guys are not intending to put these things in place. This fervent, what Mark Rowling said, um, this fervent hope that you delegates would be fool enough. And that is what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of fool. That you delegates was going to cut on the one throat. Cut off on the nose to spite on the face and vote for a document like this. But I'm going to workshop what tell you all kind of sweet things, you know. But God, I go ask them the question What is this thing called left? Don't ask them what democratic left is. Thank you very much. And what I want to know is not what democratic left means. I want to know what left means. You know what democratic means already. Ask them what does left mean? I make them explain that. And then ask them. Tell them, say, it's one lady on Facebook named Stern. <laughs> I give no hell from time to time. I talk about it, left me, not to never let in communists. And I must say, no, 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 no. Then why are you calling the party left? Because left in, the, in political terms has a particular meaning. This document not tell you, say, uh, it's only socialists alone when we in the party. Them tell you plain as day. So they need to widen the political identity of the party. So you're, not, so you're not only going to be socialist. That's why they use the word left. At least that is what Tony Bokes is telling you. Going to happen if you vote for this thing. It looks like so they never hear. So socialists not, is, are not for sale. I don't even think Tony Bokes was for sale. He took the job and he put information in there to alert us as to what it is that will happen if you vote for this document. That is why he said, at the very least, he was hopeful that it will create the grounds for debate and discussion within the party. No, make it go no further than that. Comrades, make every delegate well to know. If you understand what it is I'm trying to tell you, get the documents and show most of us have the documents, right? I'll give you the, I'll give you the various pages. Read page 10, page 19, not a lot. Page 10, page 19, and I think 20. You get all that information. Man, them coming at the party to mash it up. That's what they're coming at the party for do. Let me tell you what I think happened. I don't think 
Just like how when they decided to challenge Dr. Peter Phillips and thought, they thought that they thought it through, but they never thought it through well enough. If they had, Bunting would have met Mark Run and him staying at the wings. Right? And if Mark lose, spend all that money. And if Mark lose, then him would have been against Lisa. But he never think it through. And this thing now, what is happening is they want to change the ideology of the party. And man like uh, Comrade Paul will make out sounds on him live. Bring on um, Comrade Raymond Price to explain to the people what democratic socialism means to, to them life and break it down for them. When you, when you say uh, about, about education, that is social democrat, that is socialism. When you talk about the health and the, and the health service, that is socialism. All of these things are heavily, heavily subsidized by government. No matter think that um, the little money that you pay at the school is um, the full cost of the child's education. It's heavily subsidized. Subsidized. That's, that's socialism at work. You understand? So, um, come with books. Set up the man royally. Set up the man them royally. Man them come in to mash up the PMP. Man like Professor Boggs. He's a brilliant man. You can't pay him. How much money you got to pay him for him time? Can't pay him for him time. You understand? And the man work to build the party and bring it where it is. And, and make the comrades them loyal to them, the party. Independent, fiercely independent, jumping at MP face it farm the fool. And them things are not going with you now, no bad enough. Yeah, man, I hear some things are not going with no bad. <laughs> you think Labour had to try that to them people? They <laughs> would not know life. <laughs> right? So um this this left thing now. This democratic left is is at the identity that they want to foist upon you why whatever it was they had in mind comrade Powell came on his life with, with raymond and others to tell the comrades then democratic socialism can't go to style where you talk to it is everyday life and if if you all remember that's where them life take off everybody was interested comrades and want to hear about this democratic socialism want to hear more you remember well yes man so them had to backtrack and in backtracking somebody got cute and decide maybe what we can do is just call the party by a different name they must meet a yeti lady must square road and and hatch up and, and hatch up that plot call it by a different name a compromise and somebody suggested democratic left i'm gonna look it up and know so it no mean nothing it's not an ideology no no meaning which now give them give gave them the freedom to put a meaning to it they thought that that would have made comrade Powell say okay um since all you you want to do is you don't want to change socialism you want to just go there when you're meeting with the business people you know the donors and tell them that the party is is moving away from democratic socialism and we are now democratic left like them are idiots then we ask you what is democratic left and you go and tell them something and then go and go away and say then but left left is left not like communism and all them something there eh that's that's what left me. Why would the why would the PMP call itself a left a leftist party? And and then left means that um, it's not socialist anymore. It's socialism and all the other things. That just don't make no sense. What does this mean? And then we we'll discuss it amongst them one another. And since them have sense, and we we'll have come to the same conclusion as both that the man them are look for letting communists in the party. Letting communists in the party, Marxists. And a whole leap of other schisms and isms over upon the left, including the anarchists. 
Two weeks ago, Comrade Paul well came on his live and remind comrades democratic socialism is set. I know that they mean. That was the end of that, but they might try them best. Having gone and spent money, don't know whose money, for this commission to come up with policies. Right now, remember, you know, a democratic policy, you know, although I, and vision. I did see vision use inside here in, in it, where um, they talk about the vision for Jamaica one time. I, I didn't get a chance to check to see if they have any other time. But Comrade Bogues declared a document, a discussion document, for internal purposes. Now go to Rogo, tell nobody them something <laughs> about how they are democratic left. <laughs> Who don't go around talk and tell nobody that? Because if you if you are no longer a democratic socialist party, it means that you are leftist. They will call you leftist, democratic. So you are a socialist from democratic socialism. Then what are you when they call you democratic left? No leftist. I don't think them think it through because I don't know if Mark Golden recognize that is not only the party that needs identity but also the, the people. Which, and the people, by the way, is a party. So if the party is a democratic left, then the people must be leftist. <laughs> eh? So maybe what we should start doing is calling Comrade, um, um, calling um, Bunting and Golding, um, leftists, the two leftists then, <laughs> for TPMP, and what like is for them, it's them own personal property, and then business, private business. Right? Um, I say Paul want to join. Give me a second, Paul. So what I'm saying to you is this. When you look at the document, and I'm going to tell the comrades them at the, the meeting, you know, because I don't think so an idea to know. True, true. Right? Then when I tell them, say, no, it's not a change of um, from democratic socialism to democratic left, then if you went to talk about, let me tell you what else they talk about, comrades. Then talk about, um, listen to this. Uh, when we talk about the, them proclaiming um, a wider political identity that is needed for the times, they also went on to say that, that that identity returns us to what the party has always been, a party of the democratic left. Like... <laughs> Eh? When, when was the PMP a party of the democratic left? When? <laughs> eh? When was the PMP about communism and Marxism and socialism and all them, the super, super, super um, political ideas? When? Who put that piece, who put that piece of garbage inside that could tell what the PMP has all this? So I'm going to try to tell the delegates then. You know, so stray, we stray from what we were before. We were always a super confusion, you know. Yes, but we had communists and Marxists and so on. That's what the party was about. So we need to return to that. Huh? That coming like when them go down, you know, some of the um, constituencies, them really can you be um, candidates running and tell them all kind of crap. Tell them to go spend money in a labor right area. Hmm? Spend them, man, get $23 million and have spend it in a labor right area. At likes a labor right <laughs> Take your money. Then take your money. And when election time comes, you had nothing to spend. There were risers I needed, no? Give him wrong advice. But this is what is happening in this document. Bunting and Golding want to give you advice and tell you so you must go and vote to turn the PMP into sitting and call the democratic left. <laughs> right? To broaden the spectrum of, uh, of ideas of the party. What the hell is that about? And they are capitalists. Why would they want to do that? Why two capitalists want to do that except to mash up the party? If you want evidence of it, go read this document. Page, page 90, you can start from the first uh, page. Just read it. Full of fancy words and uh, like it's a sales pitch. Right? When you look at the document, uh, democratic socialism was mentioned five times. It's a 37-page document, and most of the time when it was mentioned, three of the time, it was talking about the history of the party. One time they were talking about it in a survey, and another time they mentioned it pertaining to the survey. 
when it came to the words democratic left, I counted 11 times, and that is not including in the title, 11 times it was mentioned in the document. Them now use the socialism to describe the PNP. Them talking about the PNP as a democratic left party, as a democratic left this, and uh, a pure that the man them have in the document here. Yeah? That's what I'm having on the document. When it comes to the word um, equity, no, Mark Golding now at his uh, conference um, spoke about the, the document when I'm talking to his people. Boggs is the chairman of the commission whose goal, listen to what Mark saying, whose goal was to craft a 21st century policy and vision document that is guided by equitable economic social and political development now you know what is strange about the document for 47 times in the document they mention equality and inequality and at no time at all this is supposed to be a vision document you know that is guided by equitable um, development, right? Bogues was struggling to explain what the hell this equality is and how it might be, how the party might, might uh, come up with policies and programs to, to, um, to, to make it a reality. He was struggling. That's why I mentioned it 27 times. It's coming like when you look in the dictionary for a word. And ask the dictionary to tell you what a word you mean. And the dictionary will tell you, say, it means the word. Yeah. When you go look up that the word, it send it back to the one. <laughs> right? That's what happened here. So this is supposed to be a 21st century document, right? Um, about the policy and vision of the of the the party going forward. And it was guided by equitable um Politi uh, political development, equitable development, means that meaning that the party is supposed to be, and that is what is in the principle of the PNP. That is not new. They've never met that. They've never come with that new. That is that is there already, right? The economic, social, and political development. That is not the party constitution already. That not new. But they need to go write it back over for. Hmm? Then now, listen to him now. He say. We must have a clear vision of development. The problem is the word equitable was not defined. In, Tony Vogue's not defined it. What it mean? Give us some example of what you're talking about now, this vision going to be now. Give us some example of what you're going to do now to make this um, equitable thing um, a reality. The problem with the word equity, see, is that based upon the type of economic system, and, and it, it, had, it had everything to do with the introduction of money into... The, the, the social life of, of people all over the world and the introduction of um, land titling as a means of distributing um, land. In, I'm going to be brief, in a place named Kemet. Kemet, some of you probably hear about it, some not. It's that place where they build the pyramid where they had the fear of them. In the northeast section of Africa, right? The, the way in which they, they, um, they operated is the way in which all of the, the African societies operate. It's an extended family of cooperate, cop, it's pure cooperation. So what happened was they were in an area called, the, um, they were at the foot of the, the mountain of the moons, I think is what they call it, in Uganda, that area they come from. And they decided, and got, I, I'm sure what happened to them was that they got the calling to go further north. And they went further north, settled in Nubia. And then they went further north and settled in the Nile Delta. Right? They called the river Happy. Now they went there, not because they wanted a better life. They went there for knowledge. When they look up into the sky, rain of all of them, the places are desert. When they look up into the sky, it's as clear as ever. No clouds. And so they could study the stars. And because of the cosmology, we know that they've been there for thousands and thousands of years. 
They're talking about great year, which is 25,000 year cycle. Them can't know that unless them observe it. And it can be one observation, it must be several. I say at least at least 75,000 years, them pharaohs been sitting on that throne. How the society operated was that you had the man, when the Nile flood, it brought um, silt and so on. And that's the only time they can plant and, um, and, and they had to store. So they plant up the, the, the crop during the time, inundation, and then they store it. The priests come and collect the food and store it in these vats and redistribute it. There were about 4 million people. And they had to make sure, just like a typical Jamaican, when they cook on a Sunday, they make sure they have food for just in case people drop in. They had extra food because in other places, what they call like um, the Middle East, them used to have famine. You know, it's, that's a desert. And the people have to run from south um, to get a little relief, some food and things. And they always could accommodate them. White people, you know, we take it them in. So you have um, work to be done, like when they're building the pyramid. If you're not, there's, there was no money, you know. So when you're going to work, a man give you bread and a man give you uh, wine. Not the wine, bread and beer. That was the staple. When you're born, from your born, same all over Africa, when you're born and try to find your husband and wife, or wife. And when you become of an age, ready to be married, you get a house, lot. There's no such thing as homelessness and landlessness in, in the continent, in the traditional um, setting, villages, tribes. Right? So you have all, so the, all the necessities, food, water, clothing, and, um, and housing were available. It was a system that based upon gifts. People have them talent, and the talent were used by the community. And it was a big extended family. No money involved in that. That, my comrades, was a socialist system. If you use one of the terms these days to describe it, that is socialism in its purest form. You see, like how slavery is capitalism in its purest form, the African systems that we that was operated, um, they are operated on the basis of socialism, socialism, cooperation. You understand? So those that, that was one of the first civilization, and they were not the oldest. A long time with about you know, those cells in your body, and the blood in your body, the cells in your body, and a six thousand year old and older than that, they're all bad. That's why they're able to. To, to know what and what the, the soil can produce more than more than the other set of people. And then just come on the scene the other day, them said they come on the scene 6,000 years, me not going to argue with them. Should, they should know. So that is socialism. So when I come in, come tell you that socialism is out of style and you need to modernize. Ah, what the hell are they talking about? The system of capitalism came out of socialism. And Tony Bowles is telling you, say, nah, work. I know everybody, I go back to socialism. Except in keep calling it democratic left. <laughs> Very often some of those um, ideologies that are leftist are not democratic at all. Right? They operate the systems through political organization, but they're not democratic, many of them. So when you see... Um, then talking about equity, it is difficult to create an equitable society when you have money. Because the day when money was invented and put into the hands of people, was the day, the same day, right, that poverty was invented. And the day when um, them started to use land titling as a means of distributing land was the day when people became landless and homeless. It is a stupid system that came out of the heads of the Europeans. And then go all about the world and just come from the world the other day and think they must run things. It's like the PNP situation now with bunting and rolling. Then just them just come in a party and they feel they must run there. Not about the party, you know. White man don't know about the world, you know. Don't know nothing. Use him brain and him come up with something just where other people do and just come up with some religion and come up with some little 
Look at this and uh, that and, and has only because of the income and money. Trick people. Trick you. Take your land, which is indestructible, and your gold, which is indestructible, and go take little pieces of, of paper, but probably cost 25 cents, and tell us your $100 in words. And take your land and give you the paper without no use. Useless. There are tricksters. Right? And they come and they control and then causing problems all over the striking world. And so they're coming up with these various political systems and ideas to try to correct something that is difficult to correct. So when Bogues was struggling to put a, a, a definition to equity and what exactly it means when they talk about equity, how is that going to be implemented? What program is going to create an equitable program? I can understand why. Mark Rowling went on to say that the Bogues report went to the NEC and was met, met with a great deal of enthusiasm and relief. This is a hundred and something page document and this particular document was 37 pages. When Did they give it to the NEC members before them got to the meeting or they give it to them at the meeting and then Bogues made a presentation. So they were impressed by the presentation. They're not read it. So they have no idea <laughs> what this thing is about until we tell them that the man might try to mash up the party by, by coming in you know, or getting rid of democratic socialism and use a word which they themselves you know, tell you that is widening the, 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 um, the political identity of the party from just being socialist, which is a single identity, to a holy father thing. And they hope now to be able to increase. This is all about money for them, you know. Well, it isn't really. They might try to mash up the party, right? And then using the idea that this will bring in members now. You can get the communists to come in now, and so you increase your membership. And by increasing the membership, you have money that you can do for the other things. Same thing they want to do with the diaspora. They want diaspora, right? Then tell you how much diaspora, 3 million people over there. And you have how much people in how much people in PMP? 40 or thousand. And they are telling them that they want the diaspora to have direct membership in the PMP and make decisions about who leads that will affect your life here in Jamaica. But then that is your thing. You have to make that decision now because there's a way in which it can work. So so um but the way in which they are proposing. It's it, it very pro problematic to me. You understand? So then now, Margolin went on to speak about um, the enthusiasm and the relief. Now they are relieved because when they hear them, I go dance around with the idea that you had the son of the party. Right? Them now say, well, I you know, me a socialist now, when I'm a capitalist, they come in. So they were worried. I understand that somebody, I think, asked Somebody was astute enough to ask about this democratic left if they intend to replace it with it. And, and I understand that they were told, no, damn lie. How are you going to have the, ob the, the, print, the objectives and the aim of the party with democratic socialism, which is a narrow um, political system, and then widen it to, um, to, to democratic left and the two the two, the, two, the two systems in the party. That would be like two bullet rule in a one pen. One of them had to go and has to go. Right? So when Mark talk about them being enthusiastic, well, that I don't believe because if they read it, I know what it meant. Right? I doubt very much that any of them would be as enthusiastic as Mark claimed. And if they were so so enthusiastic, I'm sure he wouldn't go on to say, and in my humble estimation and fervent hope, we will adopt that document and it will become our philosophical charter and will guide the programs and policies of the People's National Party. Whatever you were told at the NEC, that the democratic left was never intended to replace democratic socialism. Mark Golding is telling you something else. Mark Golding is telling you that when you adopt this document that they are calling policy and vision document, 
that what is in it, if it is adopted, if you adopt it by voting for it, right, it will become the philosophy, the new philosophy of the party, and it will guide the programs and the policies of the People's National Party for years to come. Listen to the original shit now. Because when you go and ask what the democratic left is, if you allow them just to ask the democratic left, this is what they're going to tell you. To be a democratic left party, remember Tony Bogues already described over here what it means to be a democratic left party. Right? That it's going to widen the political identity. Over here, so now, you get a little sales pitch. Like a little salesman come to your door and I sell something to you. Right? To be a democratic left party today means that the party practices, what if our words in Abbasi, comrades, that the party practices a political, uh, uh, sorry, a politics of equality, which was never defined. I know example given as to what that means. Right? So it's just a little word and fling out there. So the party will practice a politics of equality and social justice. You know what that means? To transform Jamaica, which is what the, the PMP was always about. And to, un, this is a piece they add now, and to unleash the local and Caribbean entrepreneurial energies to create new industries and re-envisioning of some old ones as a catalyst to the economic transformation of Jamaica. It went on to say, 60 years after independence, Jama the Jamaican population demands no less. A who in a Jamaica a demand um, democratic left? Who, who doing that? The people them want the, the opposition to function like an opposition and represent them in the parliament and advocate on their behalf. What that them want? So this is saying, this is, this, is, this, is, this is a capitalistic now definition of democratic left, which they, which, they, which they conveniently put there. And Bogues, I explained to you, notwithstanding this, when we just read to you, when we put here, sir, but we left me, that is what the party will be open up to. So they are claiming that it is practicing equality and social justice and transforming Jamaica to unleash local and Caribbean entrepreneurial energies, right? To open up new business and for the old business that are there to retool them. Basically, that's what that is saying. And that is democratic left. That sounds like anything left is to you. Now, mentioned in the document, catch up in there, on the capitalism, surprising, um, not surprisingly, is mixed economy. Now, you all know what a mixed economy is? A mixed economy is a mix of capitalism and socialism. Them are drop name. But you must pay close attention to what they are saying is a role of government. Because that is going to define whether a mixed economy is actually a capitalist economy where the government is involved. But what is the government involved in doing? Certainly not participating in the production. So if we find oil, right, then now nationalize the oil, like what them some countries do. And when the countries make so much money from the oil, that then fix all of the roads and all of the bridges and nothing else to do with the money where they're making every year, then start to give the people benefit. Housing, free housing, free this, free that, free hospital, free all kind of something. Right? That is how coming, that is how uh, socialism works at its best when you have an industry that you can generate that kind of income so you can pick up. Socialism is very expensive, you know. It's expensive. The one of the cheapest system is capitalism. Because it then just low the, the business people do as them like, basically. And um, when it starts to cause problems, then the government starts to get involved and start to regulate and put in rules, right? Like how much hours a person um, workers must work for maternity leave and that sort of thing. So this mixed economy here depends now on what they say now is the role of government. And the role of government, according to them, is basically 
um, so uh, let me tell you the words that they use. They said that um, this is where they said the, the vision, the PMP's vision for Jamaica. In the PMP's vision for Jamaica, the state will intervene to, I'm doing the interpretation, will intervene to reduce all barriers to inclusive and equitable development to effect positive changes to our culture, social, um, economic life by using the, the laws, legislation, regulations, policy, and so on. So the government will just go be like what it is now. It's stay out of the economy and allow the those with capital to do the production and do the distribution. So the, the, the economy, and all they do now is to regulate. That is not, that type of mixed economy is actually a capitalist economy. That's what they're doing, a capitalist economy. But they thought they were being cute. Right? A mixed economy is supposed to, it's just like what we have running now, it's a mixed economy. The government is in certain areas of production that is necessary because they feel that, uh, especially if there are people not wanting to invest in certain areas and it's necessary for the development of the country, the government will put money in it and, um, and invest in it. Like, like, for example, the Water Commission. Before that, they had um, JPS and they, had, they were in control of the, the um, telephone company because somebody was going to bring it in and bring it in, they bring in the TV and that's all. That's how government got involved in that. And then eventually, when government start to get tight with money, they sell them off. Most of them anyway. And the airline and that sort of thing. So when they're going to come and tell you now that them, they are going to commit the People's National Party to a mixed economy and then they define the role of government being a minim minimalist government, that's what they're doing. Then this is capitalism you're talking about. Fool them, I try to fool you again, comrades. Think you're not an idiot. These two capitalists never hear a socialist and a fool, apparently. Right? Now, um, remember, comrades, that in 1952, the Norman Malley expelled those Marxists that cause a lot of problem for the party in terms of the unity they had to they had to spend a lot of time that's what Tony Bogue said in the report trying to get back the party get the party back together right if you go to that private session meeting and you're going to, into those workshops just ask questions you ask them what's democratic left. Ask them what is what what left mean. What is left? Because you understand that that is talking about communism and social and socialism and the other set of isms and schisms, right? And then you make the decision whether you want to remove to 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 move from being a socialist to being a leftist. And if you want a soup of confusion in the PNP, like what happened in the, 1950, in the early 1950s and 40s, with people with varying different um, ideology, ideology you know, coming into the PNP, by the time you know, argue and quarrel and carry on over them, the people there. In, I mean, we're doing it now. With just the cap two capitalists in the party can imagine when the super people come in and they are claiming that this is going to widen the, 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 the prospects because of another one giant PMP. Eh? That 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 you need to you need to widen the political part of the party in order to bring in people. You never know say PMP shelter people. <laughs> eh? PMP country and these two capitalists will come tell you, say. You know, you need people to come in. Who them want to come in at the party? That said, they now come because it's a socialist party. Then they all come because it is called democratic left. Or who then? Does that make any sense? Well, comrades, for those who are going to the um, that meeting, that um, private session meeting, right? Um, ask questions. Tony Bogues basically saying, that this piece of document here should be spoken about in party circles. Now go to road with it. 
and he explained to you what the word left mean and then he explained what democratic left mean meaning meaning to say that this is just a bunch of leftist people all sorts of super people coming into the party but that them subscribe to voting democrat democracy right now i'm going to tell you this last point now this very last point now is something that i found curious and I know that some comrades will be very disappointed if I don't mention it. It's a very curious thing. Because they're saying that they're going to be forming this program they're calling Democratic National Progressive Alliance. Right? To form alliances. I can tell you with the people they're going to form alliances and partnership. According to them, they'll be partnering with political parties civil society, association, faith-based association, community-based association, professional association, the diasporas, charitable organization, human rights activists, academia, and research group. And then said so the reason for it is they want to be able to achieve realignment of the society, laws, the state, education, infrastructure, politics, and government. What I found strange about the name is that it doesn't sound like a program. It sounds to me like a political party or a political movement at the very least. Democratic, National, Progressive Alliance. <clears throat> now let us look at the meaning of these words individually because they are individual words stuck together. Remember now, we know they're saying that they're going to be having alliances, meeting of the mind with like-minded people, right? In various associations, various associations, community-based associations, and so on. They never said them about go town hall meeting and have this chat with ordinary Jamaican people, you know, which is what demos in the democratic mean, the masses. So. They are having a, a limited meeting of people here, limited amount of people. They're not having this discussion and this alliance with the entire Jamaica, uh, the, the masses. It's just a few people. So therefore, what is the use, what is the purpose of the word democratic in this name? All right. So they might see it and they can uh, rally back and um, say, well, what it really means about say is that uh, all of this it will be a democratic process everybody will be able to put in a little defense word all right let them try and explain why the word national it's democratic national progressive alliance so if you can get away with the spin that you put on democracy and democratic what now how do you spin the use of the word national because national means the whole country So you're backing up the fact that you're talking to the masses by referring again to the country. It's a national thing. But you don't include the people. Those two words are not appropriate for what it is that you claim you're doing. Progressive, which basically is talking about the transformation of the society and alliance is talking about um, coming together. A common cause. Those two would have been appropriate. You are going to be setting up this thing. Democratic National Progressive Alliance. It's going to have a logo. It's going to have colors. It's going to have a mission statement. It's a program. It's going to have a mission statement and it's going to have somebody who is leading it. Mark my words, comrade. I'm telling you now, you know. Right? And they are going to be going out. These two capitalist infiltrators and traitors are going to be going out with this program. Right? With its name, its own logo. And I'm telling you now that the logo is going to be um, coming out, paid for out of their own pocket. So at the end of the day, them own it. And I'm going to be going around talking to the PMP 
people, because it's not unusual for the PMP to, especially when there is a um, new leader or, or after an election loss, and they want to renew their policies and they want to go talk to stakeholders. Stakeholders, the PMP call. Stakeholders meeting, no alliance. Alliance with political party. What, is this people? what are these people talking about? But at any rate, so they want to form this alliance. You're going out and you'll be talking to the church. What's the name of the, the group of church that the um, the umbrella church um, that they that that favors the PMP? They'll be talking to the PMP donors and telling them about this democratic left and have to try to go explain to them what the hell this means. <laughs> I mean, comrades. If you adopt this document, you know, they are going to be asking you to go into your community to tell the people you know, that the PNP is now a democratic left party and if you vote for us, the people are going to ask you what, what, what name so? <laughs> How are you going to explain it? Eh? The time you're going to take to explain it, you'll be there telling the people about the programs and policies of the party and how it ever benefit them. They want to send you out now to go turn salesman, to go sell the P um, to, to resell the PNP as something else. Than what people are accustomed to, and people been voting for with a base, right? So they are going to be talking now to persons, to the stakeholders, because they said they were like-minded people. Like-minded people are people who are basically supporters of the PMP, organizations where the leaders are supporters, and even many of the members, right? What am I going to talk to them about? And when election call and them asses are booted out because if the, if the outcome is that the way um, not 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 um, as the party members would hope, and the people tell them says so because then the one that demanded, you know the man they were going to have to go. When the man they go, will he be taking his program with him that he has, that they have gone and um, introduced? to the PMP supporters in the um, associations and donors. I'm going to set up them only for something. I'm not telling you that's what they intend to do. I don't even tell, I'm not even telling you that's what they have in their mind. I'm telling you that's an option that they have. What they're going to be taking this program to go out they do. All they need to do is do what the party does in the past have your stakeholders. I mean, they are there for two years and none of that not take place. None of that take place for two years because they have no policy. Both been with them me here from, from 2017, me here, them have a um, meeting for, for formulate policies. And this document appears to me to be rushed because hardly anything in there is telling you how them intend to bring about these visions. Right? They only tell you about this particular program where they are going to meet with stakeholders. So them and the stakeholders can figure out now what it is they're supposed to do in the policy. Because they have no clue on this document. It's just a whole heap of something. With a whole heap of words about equity, drop words, equity and transformation and all them something here. Right? Let me see how long we're going on for. Oh, right? They just drop a lot of words. But the words themselves don't articulate an actual vision or they don't art articulate an actual program. And there's no policy that is involved in, in, in this document. It's just a whole heap of words. That's why, that's why folks tell you, say, this is really a little discussion of people. Who do not carry it out? Who do not carry it out? I will go make nobody here on our chat or they not sit near with, way inside here. A rush document. What was the need to rush it? Something is happening. Is it that the financiers are frustrated because for two years you've been there spending up the money, claims that you are buying EC? You can't buy an EC. You can buy an EC. The man is a so, socialist and a PNP. You can't buy them. You can't make them do nothing against their own party. Not what they work for. And there's no money that you can't pay them. Yes, I'm taking money to do a little this and a little that. But when it comes to the hardcore thing, I'm sure that on election day, when you're asking those people are like calling them, them good up, good up, PNP people are calling themselves damn nonsense about them arise. When you are giving them money and giving them the instruction and telling them what to do, right? And not, it was on a need to know basis only. They didn't know what was happening. 
in another parish. Then no, now you think you can try that again? Maybe. Maybe. And if, if you have some very unpatriotic ones, especially ones that are coming from the Labour Party, because I notice that a lot of people from the Labour Party supporting guys, not all of them, one and two, don't. Right? So when election time comes now, there is a grave risk that these people may use the same tactics that they used before to make sure that certain people that they want to lose them seat lose the seat so that they can put who they want to put inside here and um, wait five years I don't think bunting have so much time anyway so I doubt if that would be a strategy and actually really desperately need to win the election and if they win the election and buy themselves some more time because when they win the election none of these people calling themselves authentic has any clue as to what will happen after that because these people are on a different mission anyway comrades make we watch and see what happened over the weekend uh, i hear that um i hear that um, the conference is going to be carried by nnn i don't know if there's any tv coverage i have a feeling uh, i wouldn't be surprised if there were not especially if they think that they, they, um, they are going to be resoundly embarrassed if the comrades don't turn up on, um, at, the, at, the, um, at the, the public session. That would be very, very embarrassing. And I'm sure they don't want we to see it because, you know, we got on real bad when we see these things and insist that this man must go. I don't know why Mark Rowling holding on. I see the man in the church over Portmore looking like Alice in Wonderland totally distracted and totally like him not into it and the man I hang on see and where I hang on for after he established he established the the um how, how would we put it now he is one of them who established the criteria for being for being party leader that if you say you can't win if you take away yourself and if you say you can't win it's not like Peter Phillips when Peter Phillips go crowd of people around Peter Phillips. Nobody named to follow this man. This man has no body following behind him except one and two little people. And therefore he has no legitimacy and no reason to be calling himself a leader because a leader has a whole heap of followers. The man no has no followers. Bunting no have none either. When Bunting go with him, there's still nobody out there. So he has no credibility, no legitimacy. There's nothing that describes him. Or he can use the words and say, my leader. Where my lead if you're not going to follow us? You're not legitimate, Mark Golding, if you're not going to follow us. Where you hang on upon it for? This last crusade where you're trying to get this piece of something you call a vision and policy. When Tony Boggs, who is the chairman of the, commit, the commission that you, you set up, telling you said that this is a, a discussion document that he may expect to be spoken about inside of the party. And you have come elevate it and I call it policy to fool up the, the comrades then. You're going to tell them, say, so you need this now in order to, to, um, to implement the, the vision for Jamaica, vision for the PNP and for Jamaica. Eh? What vision? What in there is what vision is in there? You need to let go the party boss. You need to go, go back to your family. They need you. Go on back to business. Because they don't serve no useful purpose. There is no legitimacy. As a matter of fact, I went met this last comment. The delegates, they need to go back to the delegates to ask the delegates if they still have. Go back to the delegates, Mark, and ask them if they still have confidence in you. Go back to them. The, the delegates need to need to be consulted. Don't have the party hang hang like this. Don't have it hanging like this. Go back to the delegates and ask them. Just make it just you one. But I went tell you something, Margolin. You see, if the quorum 
at the private session is less than 25%, the delegates would have spoken. You see, if the turnout at the national arena is less than the quorum of 25%, the delegates and the membership of the party would have spoken. You don't have to have a contest for them to send you a message, you know, and say, I don't want you. And that will be the cue to tell somebody with guts in other party to take them chance. How about somebody with nothing to lose? Take your chance. If those people don't want to take them chance, because them think them, them, them thinking about a future. What kind of future Paul will could be thinking about? That? Man of 60. So what if in trying him lose? Mark, you don't think for um, Philip, though. You should do it because I don't think you can win an external election. Too much baggage. Right? But somebody need to get the guts and go to the delegates and allow the delegates an opportunity to say, you see, the delegates' information that are available to the delegates today, they never had it then. If they had it then and they made the decision to vote for Mark, all of this would be, would make, wouldn't be there. So you need to go back to the delegates and see if you still have them support. But as I said, even if that don't happen, Come weekend, the quorum that you're going to have or fail to have, that is what is going to tell you what the delegates think about you. Right? And you're going, oh, just like how the democracy right now is under threat because of the apathy. You'll be under threat. Just a matter of time for somebody to have the guts to step forward. And when they, when they step forward, you'll be history. That's all I have to say. Good night, comrades. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. I hope I didn't bore you. Um, but uh, I hope you got some information that you can work with. And uh, I hope um, we put some explanation on this document. And if the delegates get, get hold of the live or you can tell the delegates um, what your views are, um, hopefully you can explain, read it, and, and you can explain to them better than I explain to you, hopefully, and, um, and and allow them to make an informed decision. Basically, that's what it is. All right, so thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, have a great evening. And um, this is my second live. I think, I think I should prophesy that this probably will be my last. <laughs> All right, take care now. Bye-bye.